I don't know, I think there are, um, you know, being a musician, uh, some of the, be the most amazing musicians in the world are, are incredibly old, you know. I'm thinking of like the blues musicians, people like Muddy Waters and Johnny Hooker, you know, those guys, you know, playing into their 70s and 80s. And uh, I think so long as you've got something that you think is relevant and interesting, and and you're not really motivated by commercial considerations. I mean, obviously, you you have to make money to uh, pay for petrol and, and the gas and stuff. It's a bit like blogging. I mean, in the end, you know, it's quite difficult. I think it's it's terrible that creative people, not not just musicians, uh, work is so devalued that, that that no one will pay for it. And and it's a struggle, I think, for uh, young, particularly young musicians, to, to make any kind of uh, contribution to their costs, you know, without having something else to do. You know, um, I, I don't know, but I think that because we have always written about our own subjects, uh, that they haven't, um, and they were never really commercial subjects, and uh, they still have a sort of relevance, and, and we have a uh, Actually, last night I noticed it was it was it was a, a bit of an older audience, but in um, Brussels, I don't think there was anyone in the room over the age of thirty. I mean, most most of them I think would have been sort of between twenty and twenty-five. You know, a lot of teenagers come to our shows. In, in America, uh, obviously you can't get into the gigs until you're eighteen, but I would say most of the audience is aged between eighteen and twenty-five, probably, and then. Uh, I guess that about two thirds of our audience is probably 18 to 20, and then the other third is sort of a bit older. And, um, and I think it's because the music also doesn't sound genre-like, so it's not, it's not, it's not commercial, and it has a different subject matter, and um, it is itself. And so, I don't, I don't think, actually, with great music, age matters at all. I mean, I, some of my favourite things that I listened to were recorded in the early 1930s. You know, Robert Johnson's music, who invented the sorts of music that led to everything. You know, he recorded, what, 14 songs and got killed in a bar brawl at the age of 27, which is the ideal age to die as a musician. You should, all musicians should aim to die at 27. Like Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison and, and uh, Robert Johnson. But if you don't die at 27, then you might as well just carry on. Yes, we have been banned quite a lot. We've been you know, banned from visiting Portugal once when the Pope was visiting, I guess we would arrive. And um, uh, I think, people, I think uh, rock and roll at its best is. A focus for protest and, and, uh, and uh, uh, saying no to uh, to the people who are messing up everything, um, and it's not just about merch. I mean, sometimes I regret the fact that we have not been very uh, commercially astute in the sense that, you know, I, I suppose over the years we could have done more, you know, like merchandising and all this kind of stuff that people do. But um, actually, I think it's really boring. I mean, I'm a music, you know, I think it's quite boring. We focus very much on, on the artwork and on this new album, the artwork is an integral part of the thing and that metal box special edition is very important, you know, and, uh, uh, and, it, and it makes people have conversations that they didn't have before. I mean, we were on the front page of uh, La Repubblica in Italy, it's the biggest circulation uh, opposition newspaper. Not we were on it, but one of the drawings from the uh, history of the last 30 years inside the metal box, the picture of Bullets going in with a prostitute that, that, uh, that we put together. So the artwork we make is serious. I mean, it's, it's serious, but it's funny. No, I'm very happy. I think um, all, all musicians get inspiration somewhere, and uh, I think it's. Um, uh, I was pretty much inspired by the Velvet Underground, who also banned who never sold any records, or the Stooges, who never sold any music, 
or MC5 who never sold any music and uh, uh, never sold any records. Uh, but um, I think it's, it's interesting, you know, some of those bands have picked up the sound of the game for, but not the ideas of the game for. Although I have to say, Chili Peppers, you know, when, when the Flea lumped into Andy at a party about six months ago and said, oh, I'm amazed that you guys never sued us. And, uh, and uh, I was, we were out with, uh, we did a big concert in London, which Massive Attack was for the South Bank. And they were saying, oh, you, they were thanking us for never suing them for using samples of world music. But, uh, you know, you've got a few flattered. I mean, I, I think most, uh, most musicians come and go and no one remembers. You know, you meet people and they were enormously successful properly, you know, selling loads of records and then they don't, um, uh, then no one remembers them, you know, and uh, we have the great privilege, I mean, here I'm talking to you and uh, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's strange, you know, we, we sometimes play with uh, Iggy and the Stooges and stuff and I think they're in the same sort of boat, everyone knows them but no one's ever bought their records, so that's it, brilliant.